Good afternoon from the great state of Maine. Uh, yeah, I'm inside and I'm not fishing. Kind of sucks. But uh, it's spring, it's raining, it's also really windy. So I thought today uh, I would take you guys through the safety equipment that I keep on my boat, um, some of which is required by the Coast Guard, and then things that I've just added over the years that I, uh, make me feel safe and that also, unfortunately, get some use every now and then. Um, this is, you know, a good refresher for me as I get my boat ready for the season. I am doing my captain's license right now, so it's stuff I got to know. And then also, as you guys are kind of getting back into things, taking your boats out, making sure you have the right stuff, uh, and then maybe some ideas of things you'd like to keep on your vessel to make it a little bit safer. So I'll run you through the Coast Guard stuff first. Um, it's for the 16 to 26 foot class of vessel. I have a 23 foot Mako um, and it's a non-commercial. So I'm not a charter boat captain and I do not commercial tuna fish. So those guys are required to have more stuff. This is just what I have to have. Um, first is personal flotation devices, life jackets, life vests, whatever you want to call them. You're required to have one for every person on board. Uh, so I just keep six adults. I don't ever put more than six people in my boat. Uh, and then you are required to have a uh, child and infant size if you are gonna have children and infants. So I keep, I keep four of these. Um, keep them tucked away, knock on wood. Haven't had to use them yet. The second thing the Coast Guard requires you to have, fire extinguisher. Probably a no-brainer, boats run on gas. Make sure that it's up to date. Uh, two years ago, I realized mine was out of code, so I had to buy a new one. But yeah, make sure you got one. Uh, I think the marine grade ones are, are what you're looking for and they work just fine. The third thing I don't actually have here because it never leaves my boat. Uh, it's a throwable flotation device. Uh, so like the rings and stuff, you huck at people. Uh, you can use a little seat cushion. That's what I have with the handles. Just something you can chuck. Somebody goes in the water, they can float. Apologies for not having here, but like I said, it never leaves my boat. Uh, the fourth thing the Coast Guard requires you to have is a way to make a lot of sound. Uh, I use an air horn. Uh, you can have a whistle, bullhorn, whatever. Um, I test this every year. It does still work even though it's ancient. But yeah, pick up an air horn. That'll do you. And then the fifth and final thing is uh, flares or hand flares. I, I'm pretty sure you have to have a flare gun. So I actually have two of these. Um, they do expire eventually, so make sure yours are up to date. Um, and yeah. Keep them on your boat, keep them dry. Uh, most of this stuff sits in a box directly under the center console where I can access it and everybody up front can grab it uh, in a pinch. That's it for the Coast Guard stuff. Uh, for my personal stuff, um, I guess I'll start with the most serious, which is uh, survival suits. Um, I mentioned earlier the commercial guys and the tuna guys, I think they're required to have them, but uh, in Maine and in the Northeast, you know, a third, if not half of the year, the water will kill you pretty fast. I think we're, we're low 40s right now, so hypothermia will kick in in 15 to 20 minutes. If you're 25 miles offshore, unless the Coast Guard knows right where you are and they are real quick, they're not going to get to you before hypothermia kills you. So something that I keep on my boat till probably mid-July, and that's just inshore. Anytime I go offshore, I throw these, even if I'm in September and the water could be in you know, the mid-60s. So it's a good thing to have. They are a bit of an investment. I think they do expire eventually. Um, and then if you're gonna buy them, practice putting them on. Uh, they're a little tricky. There's a specific way you do it. Um, a lot of the guys that, that I take offshore with me often ha have drilled with these. Um, and like I said, <laughs> Never want to use one. This is, you know, worst case scenario, worst day of your life type crap. But if it saves your life, it's worth it. Um, another safety thing, I keep a backup radio on my boat. Boat battery dies, something happens, you got to ditch. Uh, this guy stays in the box with all this other stuff and we can just grab it and go. And then the final communications thing uh, is my Garmin inReach. I've talked about this before in some of my ice fishing videos. Well worth the investment. Uh, I recently started using it for weather. I've always used it to send text messages from offshore. Um, and it's just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy knowing that, uh, you know, even in the worst case scenario, somebody come find you um, with this bad guy. So the other two strictly safety uh, and emergency things, um, this throw rope. I've talked about this in ice fishing. Steve, uh, my buddy who's a rafting guide recommended this, uh, and I haven't had to use it on the boat, thank God, but um, if somebody's stuck in a riptide, somebody's too close to the rocks, you can't get in there to get them. Uh, you know, that, that 
tossable flotation device is nice, but if you throw them this line, you can pull them out of there. So I keep this on my boat right where I can get to it quick. Uh, and then the final safety thing uh, is my first aid kit. Um, this started out as a My Medic, just a basic one that they offer, and I've modified it quite a bit, um, unfortunately, through trial and error over the years. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on this uh, just because I, I, a couple people have asked what I keep in here and what I've used the most. So I won't talk about that now, but yeah, first aid kit should have it. Um, two more things that I keep set of goggles. Um, you know, water's warm enough, you jump in, swim around, but you know, somebody drops their keys overboard. If it's shallow enough, you can go down and get them. Uh, and you're only going to get them if you can see. So, this is an old pair of mine from scuba diving that I just keep on the boat. I've used them a few times for fun, never really had to use them to recover anything. Um, and then a pair of binoculars, uh, being able to identify stuff before you get to it, uh, you know, scout around for places, whatever you want, looking at birds, uh, they're neat and, and good to have for both fun and safety. And then the final thing, which should be a no brainer, uh, is some bottles of water and some sunscreen. <laughs> I keep these in this kit bag. You'd be surprised how many times grown adults get on the boat and forget to bring water or they only bring beer or they run out of sunscreen and it can make for a really rough day and it can put you in a rough, rough situation uh, if you do wind up in emergency and you're unable to hydrate and protect yourself from the sun. Um, that's pretty much it guys. Like I said, uh, most of the stuff isn't required by the Coast Guard, just the stuff that I mentioned. Hopefully you found this video educational. Um, it was a good refresher for me to make sure that I had everything that I, I like keeping and that all my Coast Guard stuff wasn't you know, up to date and not expired. Um, I will be getting out later this week, uh, if not offshore, then to do some trolling on Sebago and make a video, hopefully catching some salmon or maybe even some togue. Um, if you like the content, like and subscribe. Uh, people are talking about the baits already in and the schoolies are going to be showing up soon. So uh, I think they're around in the Cape this week. So we'll be getting into the striper fishing real soon. But uh, thanks for watching. Have a good week.